It is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on 20 November 2021 of the Honourable Donald James Grimes AO, a former minister and senator for the state of Tasmania from 1974 to 1987. I call on the Leader of the Government in the Senate, Senator Birmingham. Thank you, Mr President. I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of former Senator the Honourable Don Grimes AO. There being no objection, leave is granted. I thank the Senate. I move that the Senate expresses its sorrow at the death on 20 November 2021 of the Honourable Donald James Grimes AO, former Senator for Tasmania and Minister for Social Security and Minister for Community Services, places on record its gratitude for his service to the Parliament and the nation and tenders its sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Mr President, today we take the opportunity to reflect on the life and lasting contributions of former Senator Don, Dr Don Grimes. We remember Don Grimes as a man of great compassion and decency, whose legacy endures through the social policy reforms that he advanced. Born on 4 October in 1937 in Albury, New South Wales, Donald James Grimes was son to Walter and Nancy Grimes. His father worked as a fitter and turner with New South Wales Railways, and his mother, Nancy, who worked as a nurse. I'm not too sure how many of us in the chamber today would have been all that familiar with Hansard at an early age. Nevertheless, in reflecting on Don's upbringing today, it's interesting to note that, despite a lack of books in his home, one of the few publications apparently in the Grimes household—how, I'm not quite clear—was apparently Hansard of which Don was an avid reader, the first instance of a political thread that was to continue to weave itself through Don's journey through and beyond his service in public office. Through his schooling at Fort Street High School and thereafter, Don was remembered as an exceptional sportsman who excelled in athletics, rugby union, Aussie rules football and water polo. After matriculating in 1954, Don studied medicine at the University of Sydney completing his clinical training at the Royal North Shore Hospital. Of note, one of Don's lecturers during his medical training at the University of Sydney was someone to be a future colleague of his, uh, a future colleague from across the aisle in Senator Peter Baum. Through his work in regional Tasmania, Don observed the debilitating effects of poverty, domestic violence and illegal abortions, which would influence his approach towards social policy. His work took him and his young family to the UK in 1965. Here, his political views were consolidated by the experiences he had, which included joining the British Labor Party. Upon returning home to Australia in 1966, Don Grimes's political interest was piqued further by the challenges posed in Australia at that time of the Vietnam War, and in 1968, he made the life-altering decision for him to join the Australian Labor Party. Six years later, Don's active involvement in the Tasmanian branch of the Labor Party culminated in his election to the Australian Senate in 1974, just ahead of the tumult that was to occur in the Senate just one year later. In his maiden speech to the Senate, Donald Grimes outlined his noble vision of an Australian future where, and I quote, people should have the freedom and the opportunity to realise their reasonable ambitions without being exploited by others or, indeed, without exploiting others. Don Grimes quickly ascended to the position of leadership on the opposition front bench in January of 1976, having been elected by the Federal Labor Caucus to serve as the Shadow Minister for Social Security. Grimes fostered strong relationships and a broad dialogue with interest groups and stakeholders in his portfolio right across the nation. In this way, he helped to craft the Labor Party's social security election platforms and cemented himself as an increasingly influential figure within the then modern-day Labor Party. He indeed helped to transform Labor's platform and policies to return it to being an electable alternative following the crushing defeats of the Whitlam government and in the 1977 election. Administratively, Don Grimes also stepped up to serve as president of the then troubled Tasmanian branch of the ALP when his party called upon him, holding multiple leadership roles, helping to lead 
Labor back to government. And following Labor's election victory in March of 1983, Donald Grimes was appointed Minister for Social Security in the Hawke government. He was an active minister, indeed an activist minister. His time as minister, perhaps through that, no achievement stands out more than the enactment of the Disability Services Act of 1986. The act enjoyed bipartisan support, reflective of Don Grimes' widespread consultation that he had undertaken. It provided linking government funding to organisations for specified outcomes for clients, providing recognition and dignity to people with disabilities. As those of us serving in this place through recent years may reflect upon modern-day reform such as the NDIS, the first steps for real support by a Commonwealth government in disability services were taken very much during that era and under the leadership of Don Grimes. Don Grimes was a true Labor believer, a true believer in the philosophies that underpin the Labor movement. During his time in government, he pursued a better and more equitable Australia. He also was there for some great challenges. Former Labor Health Minister Neil Blewett, a cabinet colleague of Don's, considered Grimes to be very much the architect of Labor's social reform agenda. And together, Neil Blewett and Don, Don Grimes are remembered for the work that they undertook in combating the terrifying AIDS epidemic in Australia in the 1980s. The public health response to the AIDS crisis has long been lauded as one of the most effective in Australia, and that undertaken by the likes of Neil Blewett and Don Grimes at that time in Australia was recognised as one of the most effective in the world. His advocacy in this space continued long after his service in the Australian Parliament. Don Grimes also controversially was the architect of the reinstatement of the assets test on the aged pension in Australia. In doing so, he took a difficult policy platform. He argued the case for the, for the aged pension to be applied in a manner that was truly needs-based and to be reflective of this need for sustainability in the provision of such social services spending. Indeed, it was that pursuit of sustainability that also was reflected in some of his less successful attempts at policy reform. Don Grimes argued strongly for tax reform in Australia, for the Labor Party to pursue an enhancement of tax revenue raising, particularly through the pursuit of indirect taxes the type of tax reform that would take some decades until it was enacted with the GST at a later stage. But he did so, arguing quite transparently that if the left of the Labor Party, as he thought was appropriate, were to pursue a bigger welfare state, a greater role for government, then it needed to be appropriately funded, to fairly, be fairly funded, and that such indirect tax measures were a way to do so. He was true to himself, applying principles based again on the need for sustainability in budget and in welfare spending, but unfortunately at that time was unsuccessful in persuading his party to hold the line. Don Grimes would leave Parliament in 1987 following a number of health complications. From 1987 to 1991, Grimes served as Australia's ambassador to the Netherlands having built strong relations through international socialist movements, particularly uh, with Euro across European nations. During his service in the Netherlands, he took on roles, again combating AIDS and particularly leading parts of the World Health Organization response. I noted in particular one of Don Grimes' quotes made to a journalist in 1988, reflecting on his view of Australia from afar and indeed also reflective of Don Grimes' commitment to innovative, ambitious policy reform. From that perspective of overseas, he said, and I quote, in Australia there is a healthy suspicion of the new, but sometimes a pathological suspicion. Politicians there, including me at times, have been reluctant to try new programs in case they don't work. Unless you accept that when you try new approaches, some will fail, then you will never get anywhere. There's an unfortunate corollary 
that when people do try new programs which fail, they are reluctant to admit they have failed. It's an insight that it's well worth all of us recalling even some decades later. As we navigate the challenges of coronavirus, uh, of rapid technological change and globalisation, uh, of the strategic challenges within our region, it's important to remember the need for policy innovation, the need for policy ambition, the need to be willing to fail and the need to acknowledge failure. Don's insights remain as pertinent today as they were over 30 years ago. In recognition of his services to the Australian Parliament and to international relations, Don was appointed an Officer of the Order of Australia in 1992. Mr President, we can and should all draw strength and encouragement from Don's posture towards the challenges of his time. His pursuit of policy with principle and purpose earned him respect and praise across factional boundaries, across party boundaries and across politics generally. He wasn't always successful, but he made real, meaningful, lasting and beneficial reforms to our nation. I know firsthand from speaking to those who knew Don Grimes, even some of those who worked for Don Grimes, that he was admired, respected and loved by many. On behalf of the Australian Government and the Australian Senate, I extend our sincerest condolences to Don's family and our thanks for his service to the nation. Senator Gallagher. Thank you very much, Mr President. I rise on behalf of the Labor Party and the opposition to contribute to the condolence motion in honour of Senator Donald James Grimes, a former minister in the Hawke government and a proud public servant in this place. It's important that we take this time to reflect on Senator Grimes and the many significant, indelible contributions he made to our nation. He was a man of immense drive, pragmatism and integrity, who was determined to correct injustice and inequality wherever he saw it. He would play a crucial role in the development and implementation of one of the most significant public policies in our nation's history. The seeds of that success can be found in his childhood, where a lifelong commitment to social justice was forged. Senator Grimes was born in Albury, New South Wales, in 1937. With his mother dying at an early age, Don grew up in a single-parent, working-class family. His father, a fitter and turner with New South Wales Railway, became a significant influence on, on Don and helped to shape his worldview one dominated by a sense of egalitarianism. Another aspect of his childhood would also have a profound effect on the young Don Grimes and begin a true love for the business of this place. There was a lack of books in the family home, but one of the few publications available was the Parliament's Hansard, as the Leader of the Government said in his remarks. As an avid reader, his passion for politics and the issues of the day flourished from the records of debate in this great chamber. It served as tremendous foreshadowing. His enlightening and impassioned speeches would go on to be transcribed in newer editions of his old favourite book. In particular, Senator Grimes is remembered for his contributions which sought to amplify the voices of minority groups and shine a light on issues which were often overlooked. These contributions were often informed by Senator Grimes' early career in his field of medicine, one that exposed him to many stories too often ignored. Senator Grimes would undertake his clinical training at the Royal North Shore si Hospital in Sydney, followed by an internship at Royal Hobart Hospital and a stint in London. This world whirlwind tour as a young GP showed Senator Grimes the contradictions of our society. His time at Royal Hobart Hospital contrasted starkly with his time at North Shore. In Hobart, he encountered patients far less fortunate than those he treated in Sydney. The Royal Hobart gave him a front row seat to the devastating effects of poverty, domestic violence and illegal abortions. Later in London, he became acutely aware of the separation of classes in the United Kingdom, an awareness that inspired him to join the British Labor Party. This gave him exposure to the workings of European social democracies and helped him envisage a, envisage a fairer and more equal Australia. These experiences had a profound impact on Senator Grimes, and he would later return to Tasmania and join the Australian Labor Party in the late 1960s, in part inspired by activism surrounding the ongoing Vietnam War. 
It would be the start of a political career which would culminate in his 13-year tenure as a senator for Tasmania. When he came to this place, it was only fitting that one of the main priorities that he set out in his first speech was health care, and specifically the need for a national health insurance scheme. It would be an off-the-cuff remark, not just his commitment to health care, but the entire speech. He had had little notice to pre prepare his remarks, less than 24 hours, and even those hastily prepared notes were taken away from him by Attorney-General Lionel Murphy, who said that Grimes would perform far better on his feet. He was right. The new senator used his pulpit to decry the resistance by Conservatives to change and reform, saying that it was a response to be expected from those of advantage and privilege. Senator Grimes concluded by saying that and I quote, people should have the freedom and the opportunity to realise their reasonable ambitions without being exploited by others or indeed without exploiting others. It was an impassioned start by a senator who would fight throughout his career for justice and equality. In only his first few months as a senator, Don bravely and passionately participated in the debates over both the Whitlam government's two Medibank bills, the Health Insurance and the Health Insurance Commission bills. Using his experience as a general practitioner, he challenged arguments that the bills amounted to communism, conscription and fascism, and asserted that health care was a core element of social security and thus should be funded by progressive taxation. He continued this fight for a universal health care system throughout the entirety of his career, and eventually, as Minister for Social Security and later Minister for Community Services under Prime Minister Hawke, he would see the program come to life under the name we now know it, Medicare. There are few public institutions more beloved in this nation than Medicare. Our public health care system is the envy of many in the world, and it stands as one of the greatest public policy achievements by an Australian government in our history. It took a number of tremendous individuals to create Medicare, and Senator Grimes was one of the very best, and we owe him a great deal. His finest hour is, is now a right enjoyed by all Australians, and there is no more fitting legacy for a person like Don than the little green card in our wallets. Senator Grimes was a passionate advocate for many other issues, and he was always more than willing to speak up on divisive topics and raise up the voices of minorities in this country. Senator Grimes was instrumental in the Hawke government's effective and informed response to the AIDS crisis during the early 1980s. He answered the first question to Parliament on AIDS in May 1983 and advocated in the Cabinet that the issue justified a fast, science-based policy response free from politics. Given the stigma around the issue at the time, this further demonstrated the high premium he placed on the dignity of all Australians. This trait was also shown in Senator Grimes's tireless work in the disability sector. In 1983, Don established the Disability Advisory Council of Australia. The council allowed people with a disability to do what he had been doing for them for so many years. It provided an avenue for people with a disability to directly advise the government on policies which affected their lives and their community. And perhaps his most significant achievement alongside Medicare in this space was the enactment of the Disability Services Act of 1986. By challenging the long-held views of professionals and peak bodies, he was able to advocate for a system which linked government funding to specific goals for clients who had a disability. In doing so, he believed he had given people with a disability, and I quote, a proper recognition of their rights and dignity and opportunity for the fullest possible participation in the community. Given his passionate advocacy along, across a range of controversial issues, you would imagine that Senator Grimes would have had many detractors in this place, but in fact it was quite the opposite. And it speaks volumes of his character that Don was well liked by many of his colleagues right across the chamber. Senator Michael Tate dubbed him the quiet revolutionary for his contribution to social policy, and his ca cabinet colleague Neil Blewett considered Senator Grimes to be the architect of much of Labor's social reform agenda. 
Senator Rosemary Crowley said that he was numbered amongst the very strong feminists of her acquaintances, while Senator Susan Ryan acknowledged his enormously effective new programs for the disadvantaged and the provision of 40,000 new childcare places, stating, and I quote, he has done all of those things without great fuss, without pomposity or high-flown rhetoric. He is kind, decent, humane. After politics, Senator Grimes' sense of community and his willingness to stand up and speak to the for the disadvantaged took him all over the world, where he continued to advocate for change for all. He would serve as an ambassador to the Netherlands, changing a world, chairing a World Health Organization Committee on AIDS in prison. He would also serve on the Nas Australian National Council on AIDS and work as a director of oncology in Kuala Lumpur and a principal advisor to the Health Minister of Bahrain. A life well lived and one thoroughly decent and of great service to our nation. It was all part of his central ethos, a sentiment best summed up by this quote from his valedictory speech. Senator Don Grimes said that we should always strive for a more loving and caring society. This is a core tenet of the philosophy of our party, and we seek to carry on Don's work and his legacy in this chamber today. My thoughts are with Senator Grimes' children, Roger, Jan, Jenny, Sally and Ben. I hope they are tremendously proud of their father's accomplishments, as we in this chamber are today. Senator Brown. Um, Thank you, Mr. President. I would also like to express my condolence and those of the Tasmanian Labor on the passing of former Senator the Honourable Don, Dr. Don Grimes. It is with sadness that we saw the passing of a giant of the Labor Party. Don's contribution to the nation and to Labor was significant. His list of achievements in the service of Australia, Tasmania and his people is immense, ranging from grassroots involvement to the highest echelons of government. A local GP, senator for Tasmania, federal minister and Australian ambassador, a leader on disability, women's refuge, Australia's response to HIV and community and aged care services, Don's contribution and his legacy has had long-lasting significance. He served as Minister for Social Security and Community Services in the Hawke government, as well as Deputy Leader of the Government in the Senate. Don was a much-loved and well-known GP prior to entering politics, and his kindness and wit were appreciated by all who came across him. I had the privilege of knowing Don Grimes. I first met Don in 1983 as a young Labor member. He was larger than life. His reputation of genuine, caring and gen a generous man was always on display and well earned. Not once did I hear him personally denigrate an individual to make a political point. He was a brilliant representative of his adopted state of Tasmania in the Senate and in government. Don didn't shy away from the challenges or a policy fight. He had the unenviable reputation of pushing through and getting results. Don moved to Tasmania in 1966 and made Launceston his home and took on various medical roles, including providing general practice service in Launceston. It was here where Don joined the Australian Labor Party acting on his disapproval of the Vietnam War and his support for Medibank. By 1974, he was representing Tasmania as a Labor senator. Legend has it that he worked on his first speech in the Senate the night before he was due to deliver it. He rose to begin his address when the then Senator Lionel Murphy took the draft and told Don that he would, prefer, uh, he would perform better thinking on his feet. My dear friend, the former, former Senator Alex Gallagher, would have indeed approved of this action. <laughs> Don's passion for politics, public policy and equality were well known, widely regarded and never wavered. As many will recall, 
He was a, a great minister for social services in the Hawke government. It was during this time that Don pioneered the first ever Federal Disability Advisory Council. He also established, and I note the language of the day, the Handicap Programs Review, which was to examine the impact of social policies and procedures on people with disability. This was the first time that people with disability had been invited into the federal policy making process. As a result of this review, the Disability Services Act of 1986 was born. At the heart of the review and legislation was the principle that future government funds should be directed towards services and programs that provided people with disability the greatest amount of flexibility possible. Although the language of the day is clumsy, Don's recognition of the need for flexibility in directing funding towards dis disability services and supports was ahead of its time. In many respects, his long overdue recognition of the needs of people with disability at a federal level was the beginning of the journey towards the NDIS. Don's experience in medicine and passion for inclusion and equality also meant that he played a leading role in the Hawke government's effective and enlightened approach towards recognising and combating AIDS and supporting those with the virus. Don was adamant that any government action and policy should be science-based, again, as Senator Gallagher has indicated. Again, he was ahead of his time. Don would later go on to serve as the first ever Federal Minister for Community Services. During his time in this role, one of the most significant achievements was the funding of an additional 40,000 childcare places. To provide some perspective on how important this commitment was, it is equivalent to roughly one million additional places today. One of his colleagues at the time, another great Labor minister, former Senator Susan Ryan, described Don's many social policy achievements as enormously effective new programs. She went on to say, he has done all those things without great fuss, without pomposity or high-flown rhetoric. He's a kind, decent and humane. His contribution towards the fight against AIDS was recognised while he was serving overseas as Australia's ambassador to the Netherlands. When he was appointed as chair of the World Health Organisation Committee on AIDS in prison. On returning to Australia, he continued his work and advocacy in this area by chairing the Australian Council of AIDS from 1992 until 1996. When Don announced his retirement from the Senate due to health reasons, he left an important depart departing message, calling on politicians and the wider community to develop a more loving and caring society. In making this call, Don urged people to reflect on what happens in times of national tragedy and disaster, when we see how members of our society come together and use their skills and resources to help one another, particularly those in difficulty. We have all witnessed many modern day examples of this during the pandemic. Don was loved and admired by many in Tasmania and throughout the Labor Party and the Labor movement. He was respected in the federal parliament with friendships extending across party lines. His extensive involvement with public health administration was recognised by his appointments as a Fellow of the Royal Australian College of Medical Administra Administrators and as a Fellow of the Australasian Faculty of Public Health, uh, Health Medicine. He was appointed as an Officer of the Order of Australia in January 1992. In retirement, Don returned to his home in Launceston to be closer to his children. In 2015, Don received life membership from the Tasmanian branch of the Labor Party, the highest honour the party can bestow on a member for his, out, for his outstanding service to the party and to the community. Supporting Don's honour 
were Michelle O'Byrne MP, the Honourable Member for Bass, and his long-standing good friend Anne O'Byrne. Both spoke strongly of Don's achievements and contribution and fondly and warmly of the man as a good friend, a wit, a true believer, a true labour man, no higher accolade. While we mourn his passing, we acknowledge his many achievements on behalf of the party, the community and the nation. And we thank his family for their support of him throughout his time in public life. I also would like to acknowledge Senator Urquhart and Senator Billick, Labor senators from Tasmania, being in the chamber today as we say farewell to Senator Don Grimes. My thoughts are with his cherished family and friends on his passing. He will be missed. They all Don. I ask honourable senators to join in a moment's silence to signify assent to the motion. The motion is carried. It is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 30th of January 2022 of the Honourable Michael Eamon Bean, AM, a Senator for the State of Western Australia from 1987 to 1996 and President of the Senate from 1994 to 1996. A motion of condolence will be arranged for a later day. <clears throat> 